So, so far we've talked about a couple of the things we're having done. Cleaning the bilge, the bottom paint was going to get done. Yep. Through holes, we well, had a couple that we wanted to have replaced. Uh, the tank, we have a fuel tank that needed to be pressure tested. So, and that was done this week. Everything's good with that. So we've shown the couple of pieces of work that we've had done, uh, cleaning and painting the bilge, uh, as well as pressure washing the bottom. And we talked a little bit about the paint and the paint choices, though they've not started painting that yet. Uh, we also... During the mizzen mast, um, we're going to have that actually replaced. So later this week, coming up, he's going to, um, he's got a mast that we're going to come and look at and inspect. Um, that way when it's down, we can rewire it run all new lines up there for the radar, which is currently on our mizzen mast. We are going to look at replacing the um, lights on it to the LED lights. Um, so those are things that are coming up. Probably in the next video you'll see some of that, uh, but there's some things that they are, they're going to have to modify the mizzen mast because this was a deck step mast, and the one that he has was um, straight through to the keel. Yeah, so. our, our mizzen today is wood, so when we bought Dream Chaser three yeah. years ago, the main had already been replaced with aluminum mast, and it's, uh, you know, it's a keel step mast, so it goes all the way down through the stateroom and up, you know, to the, to the actual keel. Uh, as Deb mentioned, the mizzen is deck stepped, um, and it's still wooden. Uh, and, it, you know, it seems like it's in good shape, but at some point we'll, we'll need to end up doing work on it anyway. Um, we think we have a good option here, so we're going to take a look at this mast that Michael has, and... Um, see if it will work for what we yeah. need and then obviously we'll have to do a lot of reworking and rigging and you know adjusting spreaders and reinforcing at certain points and cutting it to length and you know he's gonna have to adjust uh, one of the things we talked about is we have beautiful booms on this boat they are varnished teak Wooden or mahogany teak. Oh, booms we're and keeping those we're keeping them and we want to make sure those stay on however um, you know, the attach points that connect those to a wooden mast um, are not the right metal to attach it to an aluminum mast. So we need to have him fabricate those pieces so that they will um, work with the aluminum mast. We don't want any corrosion that causes, right. you know, causes these things to seize or bind together. So more on that to come as well. Yep. And the big thing we're having done is painting from the water line to the tow rail. So yeah. Surprise, surprise for everybody, but we are, we are really excited. Really yeah. excited. It's she just looks so different. I mean, every day when I see her, even from the primer, I was just shocked at what a difference difference it made. So yeah. So yeah. while while they were painting the bilge, um, you know, you can see with the video it, through this video, you saw uh, footage of inside the boat. We have cameras mounted around the boat, so we can kind of see what's going on with it and, and kind of keep an eye on progress and film it for you guys to see. Um, and in some of the videos, I would I would go to the camera and I wouldn't see anybody down in the boat, but I would hear this. Yeah. <laughs> so like, we, oh, we know they're outside. Yeah, we drove out and, and you know they sanded the sanded the the outside of it and you know old green old green jean chaser might have been blue at some point we believe, which is shocking to me. I just assumed it came out of the shipyard that sort of Captain Ron green color. But yeah, we we not. can't tell if it was actually blue or that was just. The primer color they used to go over the, you know, for the green on it, um, but yeah, it definitely was not always green. So we're excited. As of today, the boat's not painted, but we know it's going to be fairly soon, right? There, Monday there. will be the final coat is what he said. Oh, so weather yeah. weather permitting. Weather permitting. Weather permitting, do... you may see the paint next week in next week's video. <laughs> yeah. So they did one coat today, one tomorrow, and then the final one will be on Monday. If the weather holds out, that's their plan. And then later during the week, he said they would start on the um, bottom job. It's a nice day today. Beautiful weather. McKinley's playing in her little sandbox. What you doing, McKinley? Playing in the sandbox. Yeah, what are you making? I'm making a castle. A castle? For a, a what? For a, a castle for a potion? Very nice. Yeah. All right. Why? Because there's a wizard? We got a little outdoor cooking area going here today. Say hi, Whit. Hi, everybody. That's our daughter, Whitney. You want some squish? Some squash? Some squishies? It's good. Let's see, we got uh, some homemade sausage links on the grill. We got Italian on the left and smoked on the right. Got some ground pork sausage, which is going to be going in our Crowder peas. Got a nice thing. Crowder peas going here and Louisiana satsumas, yum, yum, yum.
All right, enough of that good, wholesome family dinner stuff. It's time to get back on the boatyard. So to their credit, uh, in just the first couple of days, they had the boat lifted up out of the water, power washed the bottom, and had already started sanding the hull. It looks like it might have been brown or maybe even blue at some point in time. So we'll go ahead and get a little bit of a close-up here, and you can see what they've done. They just sort of smoothed it out a little bit. This is certainly not a finished sand. Uh, the blue tape line there is just to give me an idea around the water line. We were going to talk to him about that. So now comes the task of actually um, getting up on the boat. You know, the boat's pretty good size sitting in the water. And then when you sit it on the ground, you know, you figure you have a good six and a half, seven feet um, from the ground just to the water line. So it's easily, you know, 12 feet up in the air. We've got Chastity taking the uh, the gymnastics run up the uh, up the steps here. Uh, I think she she had second uh, second thoughts for just a second and then went on up the rest of the way. But it's a little nerve wracking, right? I was telling her here, you know, don't you can't step on that. You never want to put your feet above the actual tow rail where it's leaning. So had her and get inside. Um, and then, of course, in a moment of cockiness, she wanted to just stand there and show us how she was right on the edge. Oh, turkey bird scared the daylights out of us, but she was good, and we are too. So a couple of days later, we came back, and we could see they had already um, taped off quite a bit of the boat. And, um, and I was expecting this to be primer, but it had a gloss finish to it, so... I was a little bit nervous here. Um, you know, did a good job of taping it off, but you can clearly see the lines coming through it. Uh, I went, Mike was walking around the yard there, and I just said, "Hey, um, they're not done, right?" I had this kind of puzzled look on my face, and he said, "No." And what was interesting to me is one of the things that they prefer to do on this yard is rather than using a flat, uh, a flat primer that's a soft sand primer, they actually like to use a gloss paint. Uh, it does all the same qualities of a primer, except for it is a harder finish. And the glossiness of the um, actual paint allows them to see imperfections a little easier. It, see, it, it shows up where they need to do fairing a little more so than the matte finish of a uh, standard, um, you know, dull primer. So, you know, you can even see on the back here... Um, this all is going not going to be white. I'll wait and reveal that later uh, on the stern, but uh, you can see they've already put some on it and certainly not a complete coverage of this. Um, the paint what he's using here instead of primer is something called Jotun, uh, J-O-T-U-N, uh, I believe is what it was, and then they'll cover it up with DuPont Marine is the brand and type we chose. Uh, started their birth in the airline industry, so um, I feel good about its ability to be very hard and durable and um, stick well to, to just about any surface. Uh, it's sticking to uh, aircraft as well. So away we go. Uh, the work is already starting. They've got the scaffolding all set up around it, you can clearly see. And uh, I'll show you some close-ups here where this gloss paint, rather than a flat primer, really does make it obvious where there's some fiberglass work to be done. All right, so I'm up on the scaffolding here, and this is interesting. So I'm going to... Get a little bit close here and zoom in a little bit. You can kind of see all these little checks in the paint. Um, and again, this is the you know, first coat of primer, so not a concern. We went and talked to them, and they said what they do is they prime it, makes these kind of obvious, and then they come back and they do all the filling and the sanding and get this thing all smooth. So again, we're going to get the entire exterior here on top. It is interesting. It's just on this top section. There's pretty much nothing below that first sort of molded. It looks like a molded lap line, but it's, uh, it's nice kind of seeing this. It's definitely smooth. It's interesting with the, the kind of thought here that they use a gloss paint instead of a primer when they do this. So I figured I'd kind of show you what it looks like after this first coat. And you can see there's spaces and spots where you can see the original color through it. But as you can see, they have it um, taped off at the bottom at the water line. They have all the chain plates and the uh, portholes all taped well. All of our decorative teak wood is um, taped up and covered, including the uh, the bob stay here, the dolphin striker, as they say. But look at that hull; actually, sees a, uh, shows a little reflection. Uh, I've never seen a reflection in this boat. <laughs> so it's nice to see. So here's this aluminum mast that Michael had. Uh, it's going to make us a deal on it, and he can modify this thing. It's great when you, it's, uh, you, you're working with a yard that can do all this kind of work. But one of the things I like most about this thing is you can see it has those inside channels I was pointing at. 
We'll show more in an upcoming video here because there's a lot of modifications that's going to have to be done to this mast to make it work, but I'm excited about it. So the next day, it's now Thursday, November the 9th, we came back to the yard and um, as I mentioned in earlier in the video, you can see where the, all the checks were, those small cracks that needed the fiberglass repair. Uh, and you can see here they have fairing compound on it, so they um, they went ahead and fared in all those places. And I saw a few of those checks just up near the top where you see the greenish or pink color. Well, you can see there's a lot of spots a um, little lower on the deck that they've done here as well. I'm sorry, lower on the hull. Uh, and you can kind of see how they use it, just scrape that stuff right in there. Uh, I haven't quite figured out the two different colors between this light green color and, uh, and as we go forward, you can see it's sort of this pinkish color. Um, my suspicion is just had two different buckets of fairing color laying around, and so it doesn't really matter. It's going to be sanded and, uh, and painted over anyway. It matters not, but you can really see just how many places where they did cosmetic work on the, um, on the hull itself. So pretty, uh, pretty excited about how that's going to look. Um, we'll go ahead and move to the other side here as well. You can see on this side they have started sanding again, but they have not fared this. So it looks like they finished up on the port side, came around, started on the starboard aft. You can see a few spots there, and they're still working on that section. Today we're coming to you live from the boatyard. Our expectation was we were going to come down here today because they don't normally work on Saturdays and do some sanding before they put the coats uh, um, first coat of the hull paint on and much to our surprise when we got here this morning they were doing some sanding and washing down and now they're putting on the first coat of the hull paint so um, yeah it was kind of exciting to see didn't get to sand like we expected so as it turns out this is actually not the DuPont Marine yet this is another uh, coat of this Jotun um, actual paint um, and uh, we didn't know that when we just recorded the little section in the car before we got here, but after we spoke to the painters, that's what they were telling us about. Uh, it's very, pretty amazing. It, it, it doesn't look like a sophisticated process, right? You just kind of spray it, but man, there's an art to that. For anybody that's ever picked up a can of spray paint and tried to get a nice even coat, uh, you know that it's not that easy. And uh, it's really nice to see these guys do such a good job on this. Uh, so there's two people in the uh, painting suits here, and. You know, one mixes up the can, uh, they have the thinner and the two-part paint, uh, and they mix it into that uh, little sprayer, and he, he, one guy holds it, hands it up to the one that's up on the scaffolding, and kind of away they go. So I'll kind of fast forward through a little bit of this. They put up a few different tarps and areas here to keep the overspray down from hitting any of the other boats that are in the yard. It's amazing what a job they do, even uh, outside like this. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks really for appreciate watching. it. Um, do us a favor, go to our website at uh, www.svdreamchaser.com. Um, go ahead and click on the subscribe button there as well and, and join our, our little mailing list. We'll send you out notifications when we create new material that's beneficial there. Yeah. Um, and and you know, like us. Always give it the thumbs up, thumbs up and, and you know, like. hit the little subscribe button and maybe even that little bell that notifies you when we, uh, when we upload a new video. Yeah. So share it with your friends. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at svdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, fellow dreamers.